Ah, welcome. Hi, welcome to HuffPost Hangouts, live from New York and... From Chicago. Hello. Hello. I'm Matt Rappaport, and this is Maureen Ryan with us here I'm... on our first ever Hangout on air. What's, what's up? What were we going to say? It didn't go exactly like we planned, but it, it was close. Um, I've taken off the, the painful shoes. I'm following yeah. in the footsteps of Emma Thompson. We've got um, some drinks here. Got you know, fully stocked. We can stay here for a while. So let's do you this. Didn't do that in a, you didn't do that. You didn't do it in a British accent, actually. So I needed. I <laughs> need several more drinks to make that credible. So we'll get we'll get there. <laughs> I hope so because really, that's what that's what the folks want to see. They want to see your Emma Thompson impression. Uh, I think that's, I guess we should... that's been the clear the clear message of the Golden Globes. Yes. I think we should start there. Let's start. Was Emma Thompson's speech the best speech of the entire night? Close to it, or? Well, I think she really captured to me what is really fun about the spirit of the Golden Globes. You know, I've watched probably I don't know 10, 15 years of it, and the reason I watch is because um, they just—it's supposed to be fun. Obviously, it's this incredibly sketchy group that no one really even knows who they are, but they put on a show, the stars go, they get plied with alcohol and so forth, and you know, if you're lucky, you just get them in kind of a frisky, semi-tipsy mood, or very tipsy mood, and they just kind of go for it, and to me, that's what Emma Thompson really captured, the whole sense of just like, have fun with this, don't take it too seriously, yes, it's celebrating artistic achievement, but we're all a little bit drunk, so let's just go with that. <laughs> And I feel like they start plowing them with alcohol early on. I think like there's like a luncheon, and and, oh, yeah. and a lot of people don't know that like three thirty or something like that. And the show yes. starts at six. It's very yeah. much. Uh, it's it's all it's all basically alcohol oriented, from what I can tell, and that seems fine. I'm I'm okay with that. Um, Who is it? Yeah, they 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 there are substances to be had. I'm sure. <laughs> it's Hollywood, so you know. And Amy and Tina, of course, back again, second year in a row. They were they were dead on, brilliant, and of course they encourage responsible drinking. So uh, they encourage responsible celebrity mockery or irresponsible celebrity mockery, as the case may be. So so it's actually they really fun. hit it hard. They yeah. really like they really took it to some people. Matt Damon and Jonah Hill and George Clooney and Leo DiCaprio. They all got a piece of Amy and Tina. No but you know intended. what's great? I mean, I've seen, I don't know about you, but I've seen, like, multiple hosts fail. You know, you've got at the Oscars, you've got the Golden Globes, Emmys, Tonys, whatever. It's really, really hard to bridge the divide between the people in the room have big egos, and they like to laugh at each other, but they don't like to be mocked in a kind of a cruel way that is, like, really like vicious. Like Ricky Gervais? <laughs> well, exactly. Like, you know, like, the thing is, so you can make the people at home laugh hard, or some of them, or you can make the people in the room laugh hard. And I think to, to nail that divide, for some reason, the way that these ladies deliver, and I'm just going to use this as kind of a, you know, it's a, an emphasis tool, um, the way that they deliver their comedy is so... It's so well done and so funny, and they're so seemingly funny and, and, and approachable and have this kind of, you know, regular gal demeanor. They get away with so much, so much mockery, and everyone cracked up. Like, people, they would literally, like, with Leo, Leo DiCaprio, he's coming out to an introduction that consists of, you know, um, you know, basically, <laughs> like a super Super hot, yeah. China. <laughs> Entry is, Let's exactly. all give a warm welcome and they to Leo. China on NBC, and it was not censored, so that was a. That was a so that was that just was the tenor of the night, which or they're hosting, I should say. You know, that the, the rest of the tenor of the night was a mixed bag for sure. Yeah, so I really enjoyed it, and, and, and you had your review today, and basically you were saying Amy and Tina deserve a comedy show. I was saying earlier before we started, you know, they had SNL, but sure, the two of them together. Uh, I think would make a very funny show, and they could have some celebrities, but probably only the fun ones, right? I know they would have to have the game ones. Like basically, if there was a show of like Jennifer Lawrence, Emma Thompson, Amy and Tina, even Robert you know, McConaughey, Robert, Robert Downey, Downey Jr. Jr. for sure. Like there's just so many ways that you could have fun with that. Um, that I. I so, something that like why not just have a these ladies are very busy what with their various projects but I would be totally good with them just once a year just two hours of them riffing with their friends and being silly about celebrity news yeah. and whatnot 
Yeah, like a primetime special. They do it all the time. I mean, she did come yeah. back for Sarah Palin. So, and t- I don't know what Tina Fey's up to. I'm sure she's got a lot of projects in the in the works, and I know she's got some pilots scripts. going. Yeah, so she's working on a few things, and she's in you know various stages with different projects. So she's pretty busy, but I'm sure she can make time two hours a year for to just hang out. And I, it, would, it would be so fun. If it was live TV if that if, ever, if the if the censor oh. just picture that poor censor sitting in a room sweating, just like <laughs> oh, what are they gonna say now? That would be awesome if Tina and Amy were live and they just they just like we're gonna just la 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 la. <laughs> you can't just stop go us. You well, maybe a delay because sure. we're live. <laughs> uh, so, what, what were some of the jokes, like some of the lines that uh, Amy and Tina said that were just it just got you? Beside the we got the vagina one, of course. Yeah, of uh, course. They, uh, <laughs> they. Matt Damon. Matt Damon is a garbage person. That was very funny. I mean, I think they really riffed off. Um, the whole idea of the Hollywood Foreign Press being these very sketchy individuals, like this long list of very foreign sounding names with publications that kind of sounded real, like you wouldn't be surprised if they actually were real. Um, what was another one, you know, where she said to the guy in the audience from Captain Phillips, I am the captain now. <laughs> Um, <laughs> <laughs> She's like, you'll be on my blacklist, eh? Right, exactly. So, so the thing is, I mean, I think, I think they're funny individually, but I think they're such longtime friends and collaborators that they have a great energy together. And especially the bit of of um, Amy dressing as a teenage boy <laughs> and being so no, like, as 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 Tina's do- uh, an illegitimate child, exactly, actually, illegitimate child, it's like Randy then, Faye. Randy Faye. No, and also wait with that moment. I so Aziz Ansari, who's also in Parks and Rec, just does that Randy character, and I thought like they were like gonna do something like with the oh, really? James Randy. Yeah, I didn't know if it was Randy for Randy or random Randy for random. So. <laughs> I I just love the elaborate wig. The wig explosion was was really beautiful. And the Bacon's they got the Bacon's involved for that. Uh, yes, that was really fun. Sosi Bacon, which is a name that exists, I guess. Um, she was it's seemed real. very lovely. Uh, but yeah, they just had a good time with it. I mean, I think, I think their whole thing was, um, let's ensure that people have a good time and and make fun of them and have a good time with the whole idea of celebrity. But then when Amy got up and accepted her award, a very deserved one for um, Parks and Rec, she was sincere. You know, like she actually was into it in a kind of a not serious way, but she took it, she she enjoyed the fact that she was being celebrated and she was, um, you know, gratified and things like that. So I think that they were really able to switch between different comedy modes very smoothly, like the old collaborators they are. Not old. <laughs> like the long-time <laughs> collaborators they are. We don't want to get into that area of age. No, they did that with Lena Dunham last year. And they that's did. They did. That well. was funny. Yeah. That was pretty funny. Um, so let's get into Every the Every time someone says Lena Dunham, take a drink. Right? Go, go, go. Yeah, there was a lot. Exactly. Of, she's yeah, she's been in the news lately. She she's when is she not in the news? I don't uh, know. Is, I don't know. Is the thing. <laughs> uh, so there. So yeah. So there's. So you read about TV, but you know you still you're human. You go to the movies occasionally. Occasionally. Uh, so we're gonna talk about TVs and movies and uh, try to get through as many categories as we can. Let's do uh, this. Hopefully all of them. The first one, supporting actress in a series. So the categories are weird, and this is one of them, the supporting categories for TV. Best supporting actress in a series, mini-series, or motion picture made for television. And they're basically saying, hey, we're taking all the television series, and we're taking all the made-for-television mini-series and putting them together for supporting. So what are your feelings on that? And it's- also Jacqueline Bissett. Winning. Yes, it's a weird category. I mean, the thing is, the thing that the Golden Globes does, which I kind of appreciate, is that they don't try to go the Globes route of like everybody gets a trophy because, the, I'm sorry, the the Emmys route of of everybody being split off into different categories. So they basically have these catch-all categories, which are probably way too broad and, <laughs> and coming up with a lot of um, comedy and musical. None of these yeah, are comedies it, it or musicals. It doesn't make any sense. A lot of it. Yeah. Uh, but I've actually, I was, we were talking about this before. I've seen. Um, um, I think all the shows on this, except the one that I didn't see, was Dancing on the Edge, um, because it's on, it's it's on a fairly obscure, um, not obscure, it's small one of the it's one of the stars, more up and coming right? stars. Yeah, Stars is an up and coming network, and it, it but it was one of their less high profile offerings, so I didn't get around to it unfortunately. Um, so I didn't even I, I I very much doubt 
if anyone but the PR staff for that network, if they were in the room, had seen the show. So suddenly, uh -huh. at the beginning of the show, Jacqueline Bissett's up there. And the thing is, I'm not hating on the show. I, I read good things about Dancing on the Edge. Um, it had a very good cast. I just, you know, there's a lot to watch last fall. Anyway, so she's up there, and she is as stunned to be up there as we are to see her up there. So we kind of are on the same page, but then she goes into a an alternate space of improvisation that I just, it was just very, it was a long thing. And the thing is, as much as um, I want to pay tribute to Jacqueline Bissett, she is a fine actress and seems like a classy lady who maybe is not the best public speaker in that context. Um, what it did was it drove the rest of the broadcast to be relentless. The directors were just relentless about cutting people off the mic. And that's kind of when the magic happens. Like, you want Emma Thompson to have time to riff. You want more appearances by Amy and Tina. I mean, the ideal Golden Globes is where they have to make, where they, they have too much time, and they've got to fill time, and they've got to just get people up there vamping. If you've got the right host, that can be so much fun. Uh, but Jacqueline Bissett's uh, Phila Bissett, as the TV writer Damien Holbrook called it, uh, was kind of the, 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 the kickoff of the weird <laughs> for the night. I don't know if you agree, but it was, it was on its own little weird niche. No, I totally agree. I'm just actually just sharing us out there to the world uh, in another spot. Uh, for more people to check us out. But yeah, it was really weird. And so what was weird, and we talked about this before too, was was the idea that every, I feel, I know TV people have to sit in the back, but Jacqueline Bissett was sitting like in the rafters. I think Thank it took her like 20 minutes to, yes. get, to get to the front stage. It was insane. The and then, and then she's like, by the time, I think she was so out of breath by the time she, she got to the front, she's like, I don't know if that was why. She, <laughs> she needed a like, cup of coffee or something, yeah. She, she needed really... like, yeah, she, she needed to wind down and collect her thoughts, and then finally she collected her thoughts and the music started to play, and she's I, like, wait a second. I know, it was crazy. And the thing is, like, that happened so often last night. The, the thing is, every year there's something called the Television Critics uh press tour, TCA press tour. Um, so I'm, there's one happening now, the winter one, I usually don't go to that, but the summer one I've been going to for about 10 years, I've spent time in that ballroom for weeks on end, and uh, admittedly for TCA press tour, the tables are set up differently. So it is, you know, people are jammed in there pretty tight, but why was everyone who won, like literally in the, I didn't even, they were finding sections they in that place I didn't even know existed. Was, <laughs> it's like, what's happening? Right. I mean, why not have all the nominees? I mean, I guess you can't have the winners in the front because then it's like it's rigged. I but think basically least... a lot of the film people were at the front, but even the film people that won, if there were any upsets, they were way toward the backs. But I, I just, it was a very bad setup. It was just not conducive yeah. to people getting there in our lifetime. It just was not. I'm almost wondering, do you think, I mean, I guess they always do it in that room. Do you think Golden Globes in the round would be better then to get Ooh. people up there or... Do I don't know. I mean, the best thing about the Golden Globe setup is that um, it's it's one of those things where they've got you know the bottles of you know alcohol on the table and their people are in the round, so you actually see people kind of hanging out and socializing. And Taylor Swift is always there for some reason. Taylor hey, Swift, Taylor obviously, Swift. T Swift is always going to be in the house. <laughs> T Swift hashtag. It's a, it's, it's a different vibe. It's very much. Um, a much more low, I think a low key and more of a casual vibe. I think if you had people sitting in those regimented rows, like in the Oscars, you would just get a lot of that, like, you know, it's just like, oh, God. What you see yeah. a lot, though, with the Globes, though, isn't it funny? And I think you must see it at the Oscars, too, but they cut away quicker. It's like, you'll be like, oh, there's a table with that guy from Coldplay, Gwyneth Paltrow, and there's a guy just texting, like, because... Okay, if I'm in that room, I'm not just texting. I mean, maybe I would, right. I would text my friends, like, oh, my well, God. Chris we also Martin's don't here. know... I, yeah, we also don't know who those people are. I almost feel like if they're sitting at that table, they're probably someone that's been to these things or knows oh, somebody. Oh, yeah, totally. They're yeah. so jaded. Exactly, yeah. They're so they're so. like, ah, oh, Tom Hanks, whatever. Eh, yeah, that guy, Forrest really? <laughs> I don't yeah, care. Yeah, right? And, and the then what, is, about, what about... No, sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say, what about this moment, too? I'm just, as I have a piece of paper, it's like, all of a sudden, this. I'm like, is this a joke? Are they joking? Jonah Hill's like, seriously, guys, the tele teleprompter doesn't work, and then he's like reading it. <laughs> Off the, he's like, let me read the nominees and the what? I mean, it just felt really <laughs> weird. And I kept thinking, is this a bit like the Emma Thompson yes. thing? I kept thinking, is the Emma Thompson thing really happening, or is it somehow a bit? I don't, you know, I never, you know. Right. And and, the, and like the thing is, it's that is actually the vibe that you want when you're just like, 
is this happening right now? Is it, what, why, why is this happening? But that was really, I mean, you felt kind of bad for him because as Margot Robbie said, she's like, I'm really new to this. I don't, how does it work? And then her first time up at bat, it's just like, the thing is the globes are just so like homemade in a way. Like it's mm-hmm. just, it's, it's just like they've got this very, um, what's the vibe? A little amateurish that home, at it, times, it, and it almost—it feels like they're—they want to be at home with you on the couch, drinking with you, uh, yeah. for sure. Hey, so do you think Jack? So let's. So the Golden Globes, obviously, it really doesn't matter who wins or loses. I mean, I mean, to them it does. To us, not so much. But I mean, do you think these other performances? You know, my, I thought maybe I know Monica Potter and so Sophia. Oh yeah, yeah. Data, you know, do you think that that was well deserved? And do you think it's weird? I mean, how do you? Drama and comedy in the same category, right? It's very. So. I mean, Monica Potter had this incredibly moving um, cancer arc for her character, which is very much okay, like yeah. what Sofia Vergara plays in <laughs> Modern Family. It's like, what is happening? Um, no, I really wish that... Um, I mean, Janet Maitier was fantastic in The White Queen, to be honest with you, to name another show that like only four people saw. Stars, um, right? Stars, stars yeah. also. But uh, she was the best part of that. And Monica Potter on, on Parenthood was just tremendous and I mean here's the thing you know people make fun of these award shows and you know whatever pluses or minuses they have going for them or going against them the fact of the matter is there's absolutely no doubt that Monica Potter many of these other nominees absolutely did do tremendous work and so my feeling is if I get to watch famous people dress up in you know uncomfortable clothing and shoes that looks fabulous and get recognized for really good work that they and the writers and directors did then why not? You know, so I mean, the, the the function of the Globes to me is if it can recognize someone like Monica Potter, um, you know, someone like Elizabeth Moss from Top of the Lake. So these were really um, in, incredible, incredible performances, and I just wish she had gotten that because you know she's honestly never going to have the pull to get an Emmy right. win. That's a whole different political landmine. I remember her way back. Was she? What was she? She was. I'm, I'm trying to remember an old Monica Potter. She wasn't on Dawson's Creek. That's someone else, right? No, Did she ever no. Do a, that, was... Uh, that was Monica something, Monica something else. Yeah. I remember she, her, she's but... been in a ton of stuff, Monica Potter. And to be honest with you, when it, when Parenthood first began, I was like, I don't know if I'm getting this character. She seemed like she's she can play a lot of really high-strung characters. But over the years, she has just proved how versatile and, and wonderful she is. So. Yeah. And that's a cheers, show I'm Cheers to you, Monica. I think you're cheers awesome. Cheers to you, Monica. <laughs> Uh, speaking of best and worst dressed, uh, just get into that a little bit. I know we're not experts, mm. but I mean, Sophia we looked great. We are totally great. experts. Look we at this. Are, right? I mean, totally. Look at the, look at, <laughs> look look at at the fashion here. This is this is a fashion Dressy. central here. I was gonna just wear my pajamas, but I forgot I'm at home. Exactly. Uh, Sophia looked great. Jennifer Lawrence. I don't. Now a lot of people are making fun of her dress. They put on the two loops, and they were. But I thought she looked great. <laughs> Um, it's funny. I mean, if for all fashion commentary, I would recommend that everyone go to uh, the site. And please know that the, the next words I'm going to say, one of them is F-U-G, fug. Uh, go fug yourself. <laughs> and then Tom and Lorenzo, they are the masters of this kind of stuff. They really can break down the dresses and the outfits in a really incredibly funny and sometimes they're praising sometimes not so much I think that Jennifer Lawrence does, hasn't really figured out her personal style now she's wearing exclusively Dior because I think she has a deal with them of some kind to be their face right. um, so that was not you know that was fine for what it was I, I, to me it's not one of her best looks I don't know that they've really found the killer style of her like when Kate Blanchett walks up to a podium you always know right. it's going to be something interesting or Tilda Swinton elegant there's yeah, yeah, elegant or just offbeat or unusual. Or some people just have a really modern and very specific style, like Juliana Margulies always looks great. Um, but I think that dress was fine. It didn't it didn't slay me. I didn't there weren't a ton that I absolutely adored. Uh, but there were a few beautiful dresses out there, you know. Anna Gunn looked it really up. nice last night. She I looks thought. she's been looking amazing at every award show, so yeah, she yeah. she looked great. And I'm surprised, and she was not nominated for Golden Globe, but I think is nominated for SAG Award, and she's yeah. just amazing, especially yeah. so. And I was really glad that she won an Emmy. She really, absolutely deserved that for sure. Yeah, and let's get into Breaking Bad because I think you know it's interesting. This let's. is the first year Breaking Bad has won a Golden Globe, and it's the first time Cranston has won four yes. times nominated. And I think it's the first time Breaking Bad's even been nominated. 
for a Golden Globe in its I last season. I believe it was nominated uh, some other times, but this was the One first. One other? Two. Okay. Yeah, and he, that was his first win, and you know, I, I, this was their time to make up for that deficit, if it, as it were, because you know, the right. Golden Globes um, is really good about kind of recognizing new shows, and we will get into that whole um, Brooklyn Nine Nine thing in a minute, because I'm just going to have to okay. have a moment with that. Um, but they they're good about recognizing newer shows and kind of being on the on the first wave. You know, someone like Tatiana, Tatiana Maslany from Orphan Black was recognized with yeah, the nomination. I'm so happy, kind of stuff. That, yeah. But people but are this upset was definitely, that she didn't win. So on Google oh, Plus at least, because they're big great. Orphan Black fans. Yeah, there's a lot of fans that are mad, but you know she's gonna k have her time. It was just the first season of that show. No one knew who she was a year ago at all, so she'll have her time for sure. But this was—it's kind of like the Globes, I think, correcting an oversight because I mean to go out without recognizing Breaking Bad would have been really bad. <laughs> would have <laughs> really, been really, really would have been goldenly bad. Goldenly. Exactly. And also, Aaron Paul did not. Now I thought Aaron Paul was a little lock, but maybe it's a recognition of John Voight. I don't know. I don't. I think he's a good actor, but. You know, it was not great. I didn't love Ray Donovan. I tried to like it, but no. I don't know. Do you think Aaron Paul got robbed a little bit uh, in that category? Um, you know, I think Aaron Paul has been recognized quite a bit in other venues, so I would hope that this mm. loss did not sting with him. Um, <laughs> he got an, he got, you know, he's he's gotten yeah, several bitch. other awards. So, um, right. yeah. So I mean, the fact that he was able to say "Yeah, bitch," you know, in the uh, in, in that last go round for the show, being up on stage was really cool. That that yeah, to was, me was better than him win winning <laughs> winning anything to my. To I my think that was better for him too. I think he was pretty pretty happy, pretty pretty happy. Uh, so what was the biggest surprise then? Was it? Let's talk about. You mentioned it. Maybe that was the biggest surprise. Best comedy, best comedic actor. Um. Yeah. I mean. Okay. The internet is where subtlety and nuance go to die. I recognize that, but I I have several competing thoughts about this whole thing. Um. Brooklyn Nine-Nine, I think, is a promising sitcom that I think that Andy Samberg, for me anyway, is the most, uh, honestly, problematic part of. Uh, I just think that the show is kind of charming and fun, and there's definitely a really good cast there. I just think that Samberg plays the character as if he's a charming uh, rogue. I find him a grating Rogue. <laughs> so that's just, maybe maybe that's maybe that's me. I don't know, but but they were all very excited to win. I just that was a very surprising. That was extremely surprising for that show to win and for Sandberg to also win. That was just very odd. I mean, really, if you got a, if you're looking at you know the other people in the categories, Jason Bateman, Don Cheadle, Michael J. Fox, Jim Parsons, that was just a really unusual choice. And Jim Parsons usually wins that, right? Usually. He, he's times. won that, yeah, and it, it's just a, an odd way for them to go. Um, and even the best TV, best TV comedy, the categories got Big Bang Theory, Brooklyn Nine-Nine, Girls, Modern Family, Parks and Rec. So that's a really hardcore contingent of competitors. And it's weird to me that you had John Voight and Jacqueline Bissett, like in in lower profile shows, actors that have been around for a long time, and that's great, you know, in, in, on one hand, for them to get recognition for their long careers as well. Um, but then you've got something that's so new. I mean, Brooklyn Nine-Nine is only, I don't even know if it's aired 10 episodes, and I don't think it's there yet. I mean, I think it's promising. I find aspects of it, you know, not there, not quite done, not quite ready for prime time, but what do I know? It was, it was actually, as someone pointed out, a few people pointed out on Twitter last night, it was Lorne Michaels' big night, because he's got Amy and Tina hosting, you know, it's right. an NBC production, he's obviously a big to-do there, he's the executive producer of Saturday Night Live, um, Andy Sam Berg wins, Brooklyn Nine-Nine wins. I mean, basically, it's it's just Lauren Michaels' world, and we're just living in it. Yes. No, the Dr. Evil, like, Lauren Michaels was like this the whole night. <laughs> he was like, yes. And I love how the reaction shot when the show won, he's just like, golf clap. Like, really? <laughs> Come on, Lauren. Like, that's the most overjoyed he gets. Like, yeah. Okay, that's good. That reminded me of uh, who uh, Best Supporting Actor was... Um, Remind me who won that because hold on, I should know. Uh, uh, for movies, the Michael Douglas. Uh, no, I, I jump. Oh, not Where Douglas. Uh, ju I'm jumping ahead to film real quick because I remember oh, sure, sure. they cut. They cut to Colin Farrell and he just looked totally bored. He just <laughs> yes. looked, like they just cut to him after the supporting. I think it was. 
Uh, Jared, Jared Leto. Jared, Jared Leto. Yeah, Jared Leto. Yeah. Is he, it Leto or Leto? Anyway, but uh. But I but when they cut to Colin Farrell, he was like bored, and then they cut to Bradley <laughs> Cooper, who was like upset a little bit. He didn't win, but it was weird, you know. Some of the cutaways get weird, you know. Yeah, and that's what's funny about this, and that's what kind of makes it this bizarre, you know, psychological study. Because on the one hand, you have people kind of busting on this, like people will get up there after they won and say. Uh, thanks to the Hollywood Foreign Press, you're a bunch of complete lunatics, and you know, God love you. Like they're kind of like making fun of it a little bit. But then it's like, well, wait a minute, but why did I win? And they get really upset. It's like, what? But then that's we have the great question. thing about the internet is you have gifts to show you people's reaction shots after this captured for eternity. I think the gifts. I wait for the gifts. I think the oh, gifts yeah. are almost the almost better than the uh, which I try to make my own. I'm like b -b 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 try to make yeah. trying to take as many pictures as I can. But we have a great question from Lauren Taylor. Hey Lauren, uh, she wants to know: Do you feel like Modern Family's awards domination is finally over? What do you think, Mo? Do you think that this is that this has any indication that Modern Family won't win another Emmy? That's a great question. Um, I think so, yeah. I mean, I think there's a lot of comedy. There's a ton of competition in the comedy category. There's like at least 15, 20 comedies that could be in contention to win Emmys or to be nominated for Globes or Emmys. So I kind of hope it is because, you know, I don't have anything against any, any particular show when I go on this particular rant. But the problem with so many award sure, shows, people, you don't I, I, well, a little bit. I don't think Modern Families is as good as it was in the early days, for sure. But That's fair. The, the fact is, once people get into a, a groove of nominating or voting for a certain show, they just keep going with it, and they don't break it up, they don't change. So I kind of hope that there's, you know, fresh, fresh meat. You know, I think a lot. It's been spread around the last few years to Big Bang Theory, Modern Family. Nothing against those casts; they're very talented casts. But why not spread the love? That's what I say. I agree. And one of the shows that I I think is hilarious, and I don't think it's recognition, and maybe because it's too out there, but I love It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, and I feel <laughs> like it. I I mean, it's obviously it goes up and down, but it's a show that always makes me laugh. I don't know about you. Yeah, you and they had a whole it. show this year or the last year about how about like, not awards, getting <laughs> not getting awards. So I think this is something they, they like, devoted some thought to. They have. They're like, I think they went on into the office and they were like, I think the episode they were trying to buy an award any way they could. Yeah. They're like, how well, and, did we get an award? Right, and that's how you get a win for Jacqueline Bissett in Dancing on the Edge. I mean, you, be, these companies, the networks hire people, they hire agencies, they go full bore with these campaigns to win. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I mean, and again, that's not to say sometimes deserving people really do win. I can't look at any of these acting winners. Uh, or even you know best TV show or best picture winners and go boy that certainly didn't deserve it <laughs> you know there's not any right. major weird you know weird wins here for me I mean I guess Andy Samberg's a little weird I think well, Andy Samberg is a funny that. guy <laughs> I mean yes. he's a funny guy and he does his viral videos are great and right. I think that Brooklyn Nine Nine is definitely better than a lot of other Fox comedies that have come before that I don't know if that's saying much well are you but, saying it's better uh, than dads I don't know Matthew you're taking a <laughs> radical you're just talking crazy talk now wait I know and Stop I actually watched sauce. dads for a little bit <laughs> you're the one with the wine Mo it's actually you're the one drinking up it's actually bourbon if I'm going to be oh, honest it's bourbon you should you know what T people want TV critics to be honest I hear that I don't know how true it is, but I, I thought them, you were going to say people want TV critics to be drinking, and that was the sentence they I want, heard. They in my also head. Want, <laughs> they want TV critics to <laughs> be drinking. That's what I went with. They picture, they picture all TV critics that are. They picture them in Mad Men, smoking, uh, yeah. and and all that stuff. Yes, that's and that's what another we do. one. Mad Men. Mad Men we're was drinking. totally shut up from the Globes, right? Yeah, I think it's pretty clear at this point that Mad Men's reign of um, getting getting awards is kind of over. That you know. Yeah. And the thing is. It, it was season five demonstrably worse than other seasons have won. I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's it's a it's a it's going to be one of the all time great shows in the final analysis. Um, but yeah, I mean, things go in and out of fashion just like anything else. You can, there's no science to this. There's no like, well, scientifically speaking, this was better than that. And it's like it's all just right. you know what people are kind of tired of. And I, I do get the sense that people are a little bit tired of uh, Mad Men at the moment. Unless they're watching Orange is the New Black and Jason Biggs, spoiler alert, has to watch Mad Men. Uh, I don't know. You know, don't get you started on Orange is the New Black. Yeah. Okay, I won't. But, no, uh, but I really, I really like, wish that was one of the new shows I really wished might have done a bit better. 
Uh, but they kind of got shut out this year with the Globes. But maybe next year. We'll see. Yeah, but Taylor got nominated, so that was that was good. That is true. She did. She did. Uh, we have another question. Let's take it. It's about movies, so it'll be a little harder. Abdul, I'm not going to say your name right, uh, Abdul al Mutari, I think. McQueen did a great job in 12 Years a Slave, but is that his best? And on the other hand, do you guys think that Alfonso Cuaron is, is, is Gravity his best movie? I think it's... Uh, it's hard to say what, you, what their best movies are. I think yeah. that these are two of two great movies, uh, and I think that they have a lot of a lot of work ahead of them. So they're still young. Yeah, and I think what you find winning a lot is something. Actually, the McQueen win for Twelve Years a Slave and the Alfonso Cuaron. Uh, they represent two kind yeah. of yeah for the directing. They represent two strong threads in awards giving, whether it's the Oscars, or the Globes, um, and Twelve Years a Slave. There's a really strong tradition of movies that take on social issues in a responsible and forthright and, and artistically accomplished way, winning. Because you know, I mean, a fair amount of this is people patting themselves on the back. You know, uh, not I'm not saying that about McQueen. I'm saying about the voters. Or the the voting bodies, like oh well, look, we're going to reward this for what it's saying, for the message, for the idea, for the philosophical debate that's going on here. So that's great, you know. I mean, twelve years certainly deserved that. But um, so I, was it his best film? I mean, I think you're very right, Matthew. Like these people are making very different kinds of films, and I think that's tremendously exciting. That you know something. Uh, he did a period piece, and then he's done, you know, these modern day films that are very affecting in different ways. And with Alfonso Cuarón, I mean, Gravity is another thread that often gets rewarded. It's this kind of what moves film forward or what celebrates film. Like, you know, a couple of years ago we had the artist winning like everything in sight. And that is definitely a case of self-congratulation from the film community of like, oh, look, we got, we're do awesome and we do awesome stuff. Not that it wasn't a cute movie, but it's like they really like things that are about filmmaking and really push the envelope in terms of um, the quality of the genre and, and the progress of the genre. So I think Gravity, it had A-list stars that everybody Everybody loves. It had incredible production, and in terms of the directing, what I honestly you know, can't think of who, story, who could be a better choice. It was not to interrupt you, but it was a story about how George Clooney would rather float away into space and die <laughs> than spend one more minute with a woman his own age. I'm just saying. I just love to that. Throw that in there. All hail Amy and, that, and Tina. All uh, to Amy and Tina. But yes, for sure. Not to interrupt you, but I just had to. That was one of the best lines I think of the night. Got a lot oh, of laughs. For sure. For sure. Uh, thanks really for your fun. question, Abdul. Um. Yeah, so so uh, we're gonna go a couple more minutes here. If you have more questions, we I don't think we got through all the categories, but just looking through, you know, I know TV's your thing. So as far as television goes, was was there anything you were happy about that we haven't mentioned or surprised about as far as who won? Uh, I definitely win? think. Let's see. I, you know, we talked a little bit about um, Amy uh, Poehler winning for. Uh, for Parks and Rec, and I, I, I love that win, and I kind of wish that that had won for Best Comedy Series because it's really on the edge right now. It might go away after this season, which maybe wouldn't be necessarily a terrible thing because the worst thing a TV show can do is overstay its welcome. Um, but I, there's still so much juice, I think, in those characters, even though a couple people are leaving and they're reconfiguring the cast. So I was really, really happy that Amy won, but I was kind of hoping that that would put Parks over the top for one more season because I'm greedy. I always want more. Um, the best actress in a TV series category was brutal. It was absolutely brutal. I mean, the best actor category, many fine nominees, but obviously Brian Cranston, you know, tremendous performance for five seasons. That was kind of a no-brainer. Whereas with Juliana Margulies from The Good Wife, Tatiana Maslany from Orphan Black, Taylor Schilling, Orange is the New Black, a very, I think, still unheralded performance from someone who was asked to do a lot of different things in the course of the season. Kerry Washington just having an amazing year with Scandal, and she's so good in that show. And really, It really I, was like a Sophie's Choice almost. That, that it was. was. I mean, and so I just, yeah. I, did, I don't think that, I mean, Robin Wright in House of Cards, to me, that series left me cold. All the other shows elicited a response for me, like I had some kind of affection for them or some kind of um, deep love for them in some cases. But with um, House of Cards, I just I think that is a case of this is a very common phenomenon with any awards giving body. It's like, oh look, a person best known for their film work is working in 
TV, even though it was Netflix, so let's give them an award. And it's like, well, okay, but I don't Do you think that's what that happened? That Do you think Robin Wright won? Because, I mean, she's amazing in House of Cards. I mean, they all are. She is really so. good, but it just, you know, to me, the, the, the versatility and complexity on display and some of those other performances and just the way that those shows like um, Orange is the New Black, Orphan Black, Scandal, even The Good Wife, those, ca those shows kind of captured something in the zeitgeist and were just such water cooler shows and not that that's a reason that someone should win but to me it just felt like that those performances kind of reached further and did more you know, in the culture or amongst people who are passionate about TV, but and I really thought Kerry Washington was going to win just because she's. They didn't ask you. They should have. And I really thought Kerry Washington was going to win. She had so much buzz about her, and congratulations right. to her. She's pregnant now. Uh, not she's, that she's well, she's admitting really. she's pregnant now. She's, she's admitting <laughs> she's very she's pregnant. Got, or or she's been yeah. Yeah, uh, but so many deserving people. So many. I mean, again, our Offer in Black. She just so many. She plays so many great characters. Yeah. Uh, ba versions, and then, I mean, Orange is the New Black, House of Cards. I mean, Netflix has taken over a little bit, and I love that joke uh, that they made about Netflix. They were like, um, uh, <laughs> don't, 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 for you. yeah, Snapchat's coming soon. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't uh, get too comfortable. Exactly. You know, so that was kind of funny. So if, you, if I we mean, could Netflix, just jump in. I'm sorry, could I just yeah. jump in with one thing? Which, 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 this was your actual question of like something we didn't talk about yet, and we only mentioned it very quickly in passing, but I really, really want to give a shout-out to Elizabeth Moss, who won for her performance in Top of the Lake. And again, against some really high high class actresses, Helena Helena Bottom Carter, Rebecca Ferguson, Jessica Lang, Helen Mirren, for various other things. But Elizabeth Moss just destroyed I mean, she did such an amazing work in Top of the Lake. If you haven't seen it, it's so worth it. It's a Jane Campion miniseries set in New Zealand. It's just an incredible performance by her that, you know, to me, I'm really glad when a performance wins when I cannot picture anyone else in that role. Like Matthew McConaughey, who won last night, deservedly so, he's going to win next year for his role in um, uh, True Detective, which actually premiered on uh, Golden Globes night, because I cannot Sunday picture... Sunday is... There's too much... Sunday too has much. so much... Yeah. Too much TV. It's like the best night of TV, and the Golden Globes, and the people were watching football. You also had True Detectives, Game of Thrones trailer premiered. Lots going it's on. It's crazy, um, yeah. So, but, so but she, she really nailed that role in a way that I didn't even... I mean, she just showed... We saw, we've seen her for five seasons be incredible and wonderful on Mad Men, and to me, this felt like a little bit of a combo award for Elizabeth Moss that she has been working so hard and doing such versatile, incredible work on Mad Men, and then showed even more colors and did even more on top of the lake. So I was very excited for her win. I was excited too, and she's great on Mad Men. And uh, and then she did like this thing with her tongue. She was like like that. And I don't know if that when he cut her, she went like that with her tongue or something. I don't know, but she's really great. <laughs> yeah. uh, I didn't see Top of the Lake. Uh, I'm not alone. But you're recommending Top of the Lake well, for this everyone is why, that has seen is, it? Yes, this is why it's kind of this is this will serve as some kind of you know like catch up guide. You know, I've I've done this. It, go go to huffingtonpost.com/tv. Read um, if if you want to look at my TV stuff. I did a bunch of end of year lists. So it's I to me I feel like this is a bunch of ways to get people because there's so many ways to access things now on demand, on iTunes or Amazon or any number of streaming services. Like there's so many ways to get at good stuff now. If you haven't seen Top of the Lake, you can go do that. Same with Orange is the New Black. Um, I see a question on here actually from uh, someone said how important is critical recognition for the Netflix original productions House of Cards, Orange is the New Black. I think it's actually critical because I think you know we saw um, you know Arrested Development came out and that got a huge amount of press just because it was that show. But they really needed to prove that they could step up to the plate with their own originals. And House of Cards was an adaptation of a UK production. Obviously, David Fincher, Kevin Spacey, they kind of made it their own. What? Um, they took a BBC production and made it what? American? Yes, this is Nobody true. Nobody does that. But, you know, but the thing is, honestly, they had things like Lilyhammer. They had um, the horror series from Eli Roth, Hemlock Grove. Hemlock Grove, yeah. So to, so to me, I think the recognition of any of their shows what it does for them is enormous. It's like it, it puts them on the map, and like as with HBO, 
What HBO counts on is that media attention means that people don't cancel their subscriptions. That is really what it translates to. It translates directly to the bottom line. So Netflix needed to step up with something wholly original to them and that captured the buzz and the zeitgeist of, of like, you know, HBO shows of yore, if you will, or even some of them now. Um, yeah. So they really, I think Orange is the New Black, to me, other things helped them get to that place, but that really cemented the fact that Netflix is a big player in the game. And also, for Orange is the New Black, I feel like a lot of people were not even expecting that. I think they people were no. expecting House of Cards. They know oh, Kevin totally. Spacey. Yeah, and, they and I think thinking at the awards recognition is a big part of that. You know, critical rec recognition, media stories, media impact. But getting the awards is huge. So they did hashtags O I T N B. Yeah, exactly. I do love that show so much. Yeah, and it's coming back soon, hopefully, and also House of Cards will come back. And, yes, and we're, we plan, in a couple you know, of weeks, yeah. Hopefully we'll do some more shows and we'll do some more about all those premieres in 2014 that are coming up. I mean, there's lots of shows coming up. And uh, thank you for that question, Paul Brocklehurst. Yes. And thank you for... We were hoping to take some more. We've got... If we got more time, can we, can we run yeah, long we've got here? some more time. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah, we can... We, Australian volunteer says, Good day from Australia. I'm not doing an accent. Oh, I'm shocked to hear girls... Didn't win best TV series, and Brooklyn Nine Nine has made it hasn't made it down under. It must be a terrific show. Question mark. Can you shed some light on why? When we talked a little bit about Brooklyn Nine Nine and how it was a surprise that it won, it's a new show. But do you think that uh, the girls should have possibly won instead? Um, you know, I think yeah. Last season, to be honest, um, I thought that was a pretty um, wide-ranging season in terms of quality. I feel like there was just a huge variation, with, you know, within episodes or between one episode and another in terms of what what, what was really worthy or good. Um, I actually think the new season that just premiered uh, last night is is much more unified and much more um, of a crit of a sort of aesthetic whole, if you will. I've loved the show from the start. I think it's definitely always had some issues or some problems, but I think it's absolutely worthy of all the um, attention that it gets because it's doing something really interesting. So I think, yeah, I, th I I would really hope that Girls does win someday. You know, I mean, I think it 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 has won other it has won awards in the past. It's not to say that you know Lena Dunham's going home and crying. Oh wait, I have to drink every time I say that. Um, Haha, <laughs> right, Lena Dunham. And also HBO itself has had some issues with comedies being successful. I know that they bored to death for a while. It didn't seem to last. They came out with Hello yeah, Ladies, which yeah. was kind of mediocre. And I guess I don't really know what you felt. It's my favorite. If I can come up, if right. you can come away with with one thing from this, go. If you have HBO, go or any kind of HBO on demand, go watch that. I loved it so much. But I think, you know, the, the girls win. I think girls will still be around. It will still get nominated. I think it will still be um, a big contender. As far as Brooklyn Nine-Nine, it kind of goes back to what we were talking about earlier, that the Globes like to reward um, the newcomers and to be seen as kind of a kingmaker or, you know, having their eye on the up-and-comers. So that's where that comes from, I want to say. Um, the downside of that approach is that sometimes things aren't quite baked yet, <laughs> so that's where I think that show is. But, but we'll see. Oh, Jane Ellen says Top of the Lake was awesome. Plus one to that. Um, oh, Brooklyn Nine Nine starts up in the UK very soon, which is very exciting. Uh, let's see. Yeah, any, Jane any other Ellen's questions? Great. You wanna do you want to add? Uh, yeah, Top of the Lake was awesome. Just go right there. We just go. I mean, you know what we could do? We just select. Just be like, yeah, Jane, Top of the Lake was awesome. Because then people will come. <laughs> Let's just do and that. If, if they if they were recording, so people that are watching us live, cool. But then there are people that are just like watching the recorded version, and so for the, just give them a little bonus. Uh, thank you, Jane. Top of the Lake was awesome. Not that it I saw so, it. It was so but good. That, but Mo saw it. Um, so let's talk. So what do you? Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Brilliant. I was just going to say, like, um, we haven't dealt as much in the film realm, um, but I think that to me it's clear that there's going to be a lot. I, probably the Oscars, Dallas Buyers Club, and The Wolf of Wall Street, American Hustle, they, they're probably all going to do well. 12 Years a Slave, Bradley, 12 Years yeah. a Slave kind of felt like it was going to be shut out the whole time, and I think, like, all of Twitter was like, no, what is happening? Uh, but then it, it pulled out a big win at the end. Um, but I just, to me, what was the best part of the film <laughs> segments was Matthew McConaughey's speech was just, it's just quintessential McConaughey. Like, I, he just, that guy, you know, he just has this... All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Dave is confused. Yeah. They, uh, he's just first. the best. So he was fun. I just, I'm really bummed they kind of cut off Amy Adams. They, they cut off, you know, pretty much everyone. 
Um, it just was very annoying to me. Man, what do I know? Awesome. Yeah, uh, they cut off lots of people. Uh, they should have given them more power to exactly. uh, to do more speech. Uh, well, but then they had, there was that weird thing that. where um, Leonardo DiCaprio, who was given that wonderful introduction that referenced vaginas, um, he was he came back to thank more people. I mean, it was like that's the kind of thing that only an A-list actor could pull and get away for, get away with because it was just like, you know what? If it had been <laughs> someone even like Sandberg, they would have been like, no, you're done. But he got to go back out and like assuage some more giant Hollywood egos, which I I always like think that stuff is just hilarious, like because he's just worried that now someone won't return his calls, which is like people people in their paranoia is very amusing to me. Yeah, well, you know, an actor. I mean, I I've I've had some realm uh, in that. I've been in that realm a little bit, and I know what it's. I mean, I can imagine. You think like you get that series, you're gonna make it. You're you're yeah. good, but. Yeah, there's always that fear, that voice in your head. I mean, people talk, actors talk all the time about how they're on set. They're like, why have I not been fired yet? Or, yes. or like Leo with Jonah Hill were talking oh, about it's how... it's totally understandable, yeah. I mean, the yeah. thing is, I do think that, you know, it's funny, it's fun for us to sit here and be like, oh, well, this person was funny or that. If I had that camera on me, as opposed to this camera in my home office, it would be a very, it would be like, oh, wow, don't, don't, you know, I'd be freaking out completely. Like, even Amy, the funny thing is, even Amy Poehler, who's a host of the show, she got up there and she was like, her speech was very fast and she was all nervous. So, like, it's just a cool thing. And it's, I, to me, it's exciting that people are excited in the moment and even nervous and even maybe mess up. So, oh, For sure. Uh, what, and Amy... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, Amy uh, Poehler is great. I was so happy that she won. I... Uh, we're going to wrap up soon. I need to go grab my power cord because I'm about to die. But let me, die. let me Let me... I don't want to die. I will go grab it so we can have a few more minutes. But if you can just uh, yeah, you want to I'm gonna talk take a, a couple little bit questions. about take a couple of questions. I'll be yeah, um, Australian volunteers. Um, thank you for your question. Uh, what show was I referencing that was a must-watch? Oh, I'm sorry. I, th I probably was talking too fast. It was um, uh, Enlightened, which was an HBO series. I don't know if it's available all over the world via HBO Go. I would hope so. Um, but it's a show with Laura Dern that actually got a couple of nominations over the years, and I think she even won at least at once. Um, it's only two seasons, and it's about this very kind of unlikable but wonderful woman who just tries to go on the spiritual journey, and they're kind of um, satirizing that spiritual journey, but also taking it very seriously in a very beautiful way. So, so that's Enlightened, and that was canceled by HBO, which is why... See this? This is. I'm going to transform this into like a. I'm going to hit something with it because enlightened being canceled broke my heart a lot. Uh, Jane Allen asked, Jacqueline Bissett's speech was vastly entertaining. A. Eh? A little bit entertaining <laughs> because I. You're right. It was one of those real moments where it was something unscripted and just in the moment and strange and bizarre. But what I didn't like, like if that speech had come like you know two hours into the broadcast and then didn't affect everything else that came after I would have been okay with it but as it was it was just very difficult to kind of get back into the groove because they kept cutting people off and I just really enjoy Amy and Tina so much as hosts and in, in, in the kind of improvisational or reactional reaction moments of the winners that it kind of it, it bummed me out a little bit that, that she didn't of course not intentionally, but she cut into that. That said, um, I did propose something in the reaction uh, piece that I wrote to the Globes, which is, why not just give Amy and Tina a show on NBC, a variety comedy show, some kind. Of, I know that they were already on SNL, Saturday Night Live, which is a sketch show that, you know, they did very well on, obviously. But uh, why not let them do like once a year, Amy and Tina time? They just get up there, and maybe they have. Um, uh, Emma Thompson, coming guest, other guests, coming, and even Andy Samberg, all their friends. They know everybody in comedy. Just have them have a show, and just not have to have you know, tongue-tied or drunk or otherwise um, chemically altered or nervous <laughs> celebrities getting up there. And the thing is, I have nothing against people being tongue-tied or, or altered or you know a little bit tipsy. It's just when they give the same speech over and over again, and it's actually not that fresh or spontaneous that's when I'm just like eh. um, so let's see I do think that um, 
Let's just talk about the most pretentious moment. I am back. Hard. Sorry. Matthew, you're back for the best part. I am back for the best part. I think, uh, so yeah, I'm down to 1%. I'm plugged in. And, nice. Uh, yeah, I'm also that's... down to 1%. I better power up. You better power up, but I think we should wrap up. Uh, I didn't. I didn't hear what you were talking I was about. Just gonna I, give, was... I was going to give my award for the most pretentious thing of the night, and can you guess what that was? The can most you guess pretentious. The oh the god. most pretentious thing. What 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 do you think? What do you, what is your guess as to what that was? Oh my god, there was so many. Uh, is it have to do with Woody Allen? Surprisingly, no. Um, okay, because that whole Woody Allen thing was a little a little. You know, if you ask me. It quote, was uh, extremely Weird. not awesome, in my view. I mean, right. yeah, no. Um, and Mia yeah. Farrow tweeted about it too, which was you know. That was the best part is following this yeah. along on Twitter. Um, but the most pretentious thing of the night for me, which was U2's accepted speech, which I'm gonna. I, the thing is, okay, like, look, I own every U2 album. I'm not, like, hating on them. I'm obviously of Irish heritage, so, like, by law, I have to own their work. And I've loved a lot of it. But they are they can be pretentious nitwits. <laughs> I don't think this is a new thought. And when they accepted for their song, uh, Ordinary Love, from the Mandela film, it was like, Bana, you didn't actually fix apartheid <laughs> personally. Just FYI, the world still has problems, and you have. But he wrote Sunday Bloody Sunday. What are you talking about? Oh my <laughs> God! They, they, they just they they have lost the sense of when they sound incredibly pompous and self-aggrandizing. That's am, when you know that you've reached a certain tier of celebrity. When like any context of your behavior and your yeah. ability to kind of you know contextualize it is lost. But in fairness, in fairness to Bono, he did do the Amy Poehler making out back massage bit, which was hilarious. But, right. but but no. but I'm gonna come I'm gonna come back with he wore purple tinted sunglasses indoors the whole time and who does it's that? It's Bono. He does those things. I mean so I get it. So pretentious. But can sorry. we talk a little bit about the moment where P Diddy was a little brrr, little he had a little too much uh, and he was kept saying let it flow which was interesting but then uh, Bono wins and it looks like P Diddy's gonna give him a little kiss and P Diddy like pushes or Bono pushes him away. Did you see that moment? I you know I gotta re I I've gotta rewatch now now you've given Go me a for There's the rest this of my evening. little moment <laughs> where he did he uh, he says he was on a boat with the guy that won original yes. score Alex and Hebert, then yes. and then Bono comes up and then he tries it looks like he's trying to kiss him I don't know how maybe just on the cheek but it was kind of awkward and I thought Amy and Tina were gonna awkwardly drunkenly kiss when we got back to the commercial <laughs> which did not happen. But. That is a sad thing, but yeah, that's the thing. That's actually the kind of moments that I think make the whole thing. This, the, the randomness is what we live for. The randomness and the people wearing, you know, six thousand dollar dresses and ten thousand dollar bracelets and acting like lunatics. That's what we love. Definitely. And shoes. shoes. And shoes. Yeah. Well, so I think this is a great first on air. Uh, I had fun, and I think that uh, we're going to do a lot more coming up. And I think that we're going to talk about tons I hope of more so. stuff. I hope so too, Mo. And we're gonna have a lot. We have yeah. some exciting guests to join us uh, that will, may or may not be totally tober. We don't know. Uh, it would be maybe Amy and Tina aren't busy and they want to do a hangout with us. What do you think? Well, <laughs> we could work on that. I don't know. But uh, I would say but cheers to that. Absolutely. Cheers to that. Uh, but it has been a pleasure. And if you have any questions that you need to ask because you're watching the recorded version or anything at all, come and leave it on the YouTube page. Come back to the Google Plus. Go to Google.com backslash plus have new post. Or find me on Twitter. Find, or find Mo on Twitter. Uh, I'm at on Mo Ryan. Uh, I'm Mo Ryan. Yeah. And Come we'll get find into me. I'm we'll there. get into why they call you Mo. <laughs> You're not Larry or Curly, I'm sure, but uh, but yeah, no, or maybe. No. We will. That that's going to be the big the reveal mo? of our next episode. Are you actually drinking some of that bourbon? I can't tell. I'm not looking at the screen. Oh, please! Enough, I've drunk a lot of this. <laughs> I think you. I think you need to roll the tape back. Or there's are no you tape. letting? Are you letting it flow? <laughs> Matthew, I'm letting this flow to you. Oh, here's to you, well, Ryan, You're the best, and thanks everyone for watching. Thank you to HuffPost and Google Plus. Uh, and uh, we're looking forward to more awesome times ahead. The Oscars are not far away. The Emmys are, are until the summer. The SAG Awards, maybe we will. I don't know if we'll do a whole show about the SAG Awards, but maybe we'll talk a little bit about the SAG Awards and some of those surprises. Any uh, people that you want to see win for, a, for the SAG Awards before we go that, uh, to be recognized? Orange is the new black. If they don't get some kind of big award, I, 
I've still got this weapon. Don't forget. Whoa. I have a weapon. It's very sharp. Spoiler, spoiler alert. Uh, and that really and, hurts. And and surprisingly, or not surprisingly, Crazy Eyes actually look, can, can dress up pretty nicely, right? She is a beautiful lady. She is beautiful, just like you. Maureen Ryan, I'm Matt Rappaport. Until the next time, thanks for watching. This has been Hobby the Post, and we are hanging out on air. We haven't got the theme song down yet. We'll have to... Uh, I'll need your help, Maureen Ryan. We'll, we'll work on that. We'll work on that. <laughs> we'll work on that. Bye, everybody.